when we decided that it was time to do another food book, I was trying to figure out like what new spin could I put on an old tale. At the end of the day, this this book is more about gathering all types of chefs from the beginners to the advanced. There's something here for everybody. And this really just teaches you how to plan a good party. People are jamming out on the piano, drinks are flowing, food's flowing. Oh my god, it was so much fun. I ate so much good food. I wasn't expecting to eat as many great dishes. Every single thing I ate was amazing. When we do food salons, it's, you know, the, uh, the focus point is always on the three or four chefs that we invite. Um, whereas this is the first food salon in which everyone gets to be the center of attention. We're making macaroni and cheese. So what we developed was an instant pasta, a pasta that would traditionally take, say, 12 minutes. We've reduced the cooking to 12 seconds. We have like an Alfredo sauce here. And then Nick put together a, sort of like the Kraft mac and cheese powder packet, which we'll then add to it. Because it's sort of like family style and people are serving themselves, it's a much more casual sort of environment. You're not really worrying about beautification or like plating or like micromanaging single portions. If I'm doing a pot, like I go full lazy. The dish that I did in the book is a very sort of like summer dish. It's tomatoes and plums. So I wanted to do something that has like the same vibe. So what I've prepared in my container is beet salad. Um, beets are cooked with vaduvan. There's some pickled strawberries, some watercress, and some fresh squash seeds. Like anytime someone is doing like bring food or I'm having people over, it is this, I like make it every single time. It's just like a dish that you can just like assemble ahead of time, it gets better as it sits and you can like not worry about it being too warm or too cold, whatever, at a party. Overdoing it never works out because like they're there for the, like the whole thing, not like you to show off with what you're cooking. So I actually contributed probably the simplest recipe in the book. It's um, shredded bok choy with toasted sesame oil, ponzu and sesame seeds and it's amazing, it's really good. I just figured who doesn't want an easy salad that tastes amazing. When I bring a dish to a party, especially if I don't know everyone there, like I definitely try to bring something that was just going to be interesting enough, but crowd pleasing. So uh, today we're going to do uh, lobster crackers with fennel pollen. So it's basically like a chicharron, but with lobster and they puff up huge, they're super crispy. We're going to hit with salt and, and fennel pollen. And then the other one is the, the dish that's in the book. It's also our most popular dish, it's crab rangoon. Uh, so we grow the kale, we make our own ricotta cheese and we hang it so it's nice and tight. And then we pick really, really nice piquito crab. Mix everything together, put it into a wonton and we fry it. And then we make a sweet and sour sauce with like 20 something ingredients, serve them together. So it's like, it's still fine dining, but made really like in a way that anyone can appreciate. So the reason why I picked this dish for the book was because it really represents what we try to do at the restaurant while still being accessible. So what I mean by that is, like it still has all this fine dining technique. My background, everyone that works at the restaurant is fine dining, but it's just some fried crab rangoon. It's not that complicated to make, and it's fun to eat. I'm Amir's personal chef, and I've been with him for a decade. When he had my fish skins, one day he just said, hey, you wanna be in my um, cookbook? Yes, after nine, 10 years of being with him, and. I'm like, I would be honored. And you know, it's a jalapeno, it's, it's very spicy with uh, chili peppers and shishitos are spicy and then the kale chip, simple. I did bring something. I'm basically rocking my Korean American heritage and I made some kimchi and spam fried rice. 
which is basically all I want to eat when I'm like curled up on my couch, maybe stoned. I would submit that the history of the potluck is really the history of humanity. Stretching all the way back to cavemen, I can just imagine one guy being like, hey, I want to go like hunt this like, you know, wild beast. Oh, I got the berries. I'll go and like forage for this or that. And then, you know, caveman came together, put it together, and then you have your first potluck in a cave. Well, unlike my DJ sets, I'm a guy that's very calculating and I plan ahead of time. But with the mixtape potluck, the risk factor is that you don't know what the results are food-wise. It's almost like I don't have any control over people's uh, taste selection. So I was really shocked that it was like Thanksgiving. Food is a very good conversation starter. It creates a room for a dialogue and the food is sort of there as a sustenance, but also as kind of a conversation sparker. Everyone likes delicious things, whether it's from a different culture or it's grown from a different kind of person. And that is a really kind of common way to bring people together. Well, I mean, the beauty of it is that it's intended to be essentially one pot. Cultural differences are something that should be celebrated, family and gathering and sharing together is essentially what we're celebrating here. And I love it. I love sitting down and breaking bread with family and friends. Whether it's uh, something like this that's like an 80-person dinner party or it's eight, there's so still that sort of common theme of just like enjoyment. Tonight, people made so many connections, which is the important thing. I enjoyed myself and my guest enjoyed it and I can't wait to do it again. Part of it was a nightmare. Michelle Wolf came at me hard, and it's a bummer because we're here to su support Amir. I have to say the biggest disappointment at this party is Nick Kroll. Uh, man, is he a he's a real fun sucker. Michelle's a hateful person, and she hates Donald Trump, and she hates America and, you know, I think, she, honestly, I think she hates Amir, I think she hates books, and I, ha I think she hates food, and I think that was very clear tonight. Be on a blue, be on a blue, yeah.